Hello everyone, I am Divya, working for the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, MIT, Mysore. In our previous classes, we have discussed about various types of routing. The three among them are unicast, multicast and broadcast mechanism. So, so these are the three mechanisms through which we can route or forward packets from source to destinations. In case of unicast, what is that? A, so, a packet is sent from a source to one specific destination router, right? Here the recipient is single router. In case of multicast, a packet or data packet is transferred or routed from one source to the subset of the nodes that are present in the network, not all the routers. Whereas broadcast is nothing but forwarding the data packets from a source to all the nodes that are present in the network. That means all the nodes or all the routers that are available in that particular network are recipients here. Under that we have seen how broadcast actually works with respect to uncontrolled manner. Right? Today we are going to continue our study about broadcast routing algorithm. So today's topic of discussion is continuation of the topic which we were discussing yesterday that is broadcast routing algorithms under this we have studied the first method or type of algorithm that is uncontrolled broadcast under this each router upon receiving a data packet from a source it just duplicates the packet and it sends that duplicated copy of the packet to all its neighbors except from where it has received that particular packet. So when it starts sending packets like this if there are loops in the graph or if there are any cycles in the graph then it will end up in sending the same uh, duplicate copy of the same packet repeatedly for many a times. So that results in storm right that results in broadcast storm. So in order to avoid this we will move on to the next type of routing that is controlled broadcast. The main intent of controlled flooding in case of broadcast is this is control flooding okay. The main intent of moving on to the control flooding here is to avoid uh, broadcast storm. How to avoid this? In order to avoid broadcast storm what we should do? We should have some mechanism or facility through which we can train or to we, we, through which we can make aware uh, that the router should be able to understand when to flood the message, when not to flood the message means which packets are need to be forwarded to next neighbors and which packets should not be forwarded. Okay? To make it possible there are several mechanisms under which we are going to study three mechanisms here. The very first mechanism that comes under this is sequence numbering. This is sequence numbering broadcasting. After this we are going to study about second mechanism that is reverse path forwarding. After this we will study about spanning tree broadcast. So these are the three methods or types that falls under controlled flooding in with respect to broadcasting. Okay? We will study one by one. What do we mean by sequence numbering? In case of sequence numbering for each packet broadcast packet that originates at source for each packet source address and a sequence number 
is attached. Each packet will be attached with the source address and sequence number and then it is forwarded to its uh, directly attached neighbors. Okay? Here all the nodes that are present in that particular graph or all the routers that present that are present in that particular network will have a list of information will have an information which consists of list of these source address and the sequence number through which it gets the data packet it maintains a list as soon as a new packet arrives there it makes an entry into that list uh, the source address and sequence number that is attached along with that packet is going to be stored in the list. Okay? It maintains a list of information about that. So, once a data packet arrives at a router, that router will check that particular list to check whether the source address and the sequence number that is attached with the arriving packet is already present there in my list where I am storing the details of the data packet which I have already received, duplicated and forwarded. This is very important. Here it is going to store the information about the source address and sequence number of data packets which are received by that router after receiving it is duplicated and forwarded okay only those packets details are stored in the list okay so as soon as a router receives a new data packet from its neighbor it's going to check whether the source address and sequence number of newly arrived packet is already present in the list or not if it is already present there in the list, it is understood that that packet is already received. Okay? That packet is already received by one, by one among its neighbor and it is copied and forwarded to its uh, neighbors further. Okay? So, what it does, the router is going to discard that particular packet thinking that I have already forwarded this particular packet. Otherwise, if that information is not present in the list, it makes an entry of these two information in the list and then makes a copy of that data packet and sends it to its neighbors, directly attached neighbors except to the neighbor from where it has got that particular data packet. So, this is how packets are moved from one source to all the routers that are present in the network with the help of sequence numbering. So, here simply sending the same data packet several times uh, among all the routers in the network is avoided. Right? So, moving on to the next category that is reverse path forwarding. What we do in this case, here also we are going to store or we are going to attach the source address for each of the data packet that originates from some router. Okay? That address is attached. So, whenever a new data packet arrives at a router, router will check whether the packet that it has received is through the link or the packet that it has received has reached that particular router through the link which is a part of shortest unicast path to the source. Okay? If yes, the packet is duplicated and forwarded, if not the packet is going to be discarded. We will understand this with an example. So, consider this example here. Okay? Here we have several nodes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay? They are all connected through links. Okay? Now, if you look at this example, we first we, need, we will find out which are the shortest path. From B, it can reach A through this. Right? Similarly, D can reach 
a considering a as our source if we consider source as a okay from b the shortest path unicast path to node a is this from d even though it has many routes it is the shortest path is through b similarly with g okay this is the shortest path right and from c you can reach a directly right for f this is the shortest path similarly for e this is the shortest path now if you look at this diagram which are the shortest unicast paths that we have one is a b d g and the next is a c f and one more path a c e right we got three shortest unicast path in which all these routers that are present in this particular network are able to reach the source a isn't it now if a sends a data packet okay along with its address a source address will be attached to that particular broadcast packet if a broadcasts that packet to its neighbors a has got two neighbors that is b and c it forwards the packs to both b as well as c b upon receiving a packet from a what it does it just checks the path in the reverse pattern okay so it checks so source is a that is mentioned in the packet it checks the whether the link through which it has received the packet is in the path shortest path to the source yes it is there in the shortest path so it receives that packet it makes a copy of that packet and forwards it to its neighbors except a because from a it has received the packet so what it does it is going to send the packet to c and d right but here at the same time c is receiving packets from a and b right c will check whether it can reach a through b or a which is the shortest path shortest unicast path that we have from c it can directly approach a right so it discards the packet from b because b c to b this particular line is not in the shortest path right we don't have b to c here as the part of the shortest path okay since it is not present there it discards the packet from b which it has received and it accepts the packet that it has received from a makes a copy of that packet and it sends that packet to copy of those packets to all its neighbors except a right b upon receiving the packet it makes sure that it has already received a packet from node a which is source so it's not going to accept any more packet from any of its neighbors which is sourced from a okay so no more duplicate copy of that particular packet is going to be forwarded further in this path so this process continues here thereby we can avoid broadcast term here isn't it so since we are tracking back in the path it is called as reverse path forwarding okay this is about reverse path forwarding after understanding these two methodologies if you observe in both the case what we are trying to do here we are encountering the broadcast storm problem so both the algorithms are efficiently avoiding storming of broadcast packets but here at every routers it's going to check whether that packet has already uh, reach there if it is there it's not going to be forwarded further but we need to have some mechanism through which we can avoid sending of duplicate packet itself at this point itself instead of checking the packet once it arrives there whether that packet has already received by that particular router and then by dis uh, discarding it instead of doing that we should encounter the problem at the initial state only so that no duplicate packets would be sent 
to the routers that are present in the network. That can be done with the help of spanning tree broadcast method. How it is going to be done? I am going to explain it now. So, our next topic of discussion is spanning tree broadcast which is going to encounter our problem with the previous two methods right uh, to avoid sending of duplicate packet itself at the initial stage only. In order to do that the approach that is being used is to construct a spanning tree for given network ok. As we all know we are considering the network or we are depicting the network with the help of a graph where we represent each node as router and the links as the connection between those two routers right. Consider the diagram here ok. We have the same diagram which we took to explain the previous method ok. Before moving to that we need to understand what is spanning tree. What do you mean by spanning tree? Spanning tree is a tree which covers or which connects all the nodes that are present in that particular graph ok. Spanning tree connects what it does? It connects all the nodes or routers that are present in graph. Every node that are present in graph need to be connected through an edge and there should not be any loop or cycle, cycle not allowed. So, all the nodes of the graph should be connected in such a way that it should not form any cycle or loop inside that. That becomes our spanning tree. What do you mean by minimum spanning tree? Considering that for each of these edge we will have weight, right? So, when we say a cast of tree, if we say it has a cast of tree, it is nothing but sum of cast of all the edges that are there in tree that becomes cast of tree. What do we mean by minimum cast spanning tree? Minimum cast spanning tree is one which connects all the nodes which are present in the graph without forming a cycle or loop in it along with that it should sum up the cast of that particular tree should sum up to the minimum cast among all the spanning trees that can be formed for the for that particular graph that becomes our minimum cast spanning tree. So, here in this approach what we are going to do as soon as we get a network as soon as we need to broadcast our data packet in that particular network, the very first step that we are going to do is we are going to construct a spanning tree for that particular network or for that particular graph. Once it is done, the packets are broadcasted through that spanning tree. When we, when we have a graph with a spanning tree, it is clear that no duplicate packets are forwarded. If you consider this as an example, if you try to draw a spanning tree for this, okay, it can be something like this. So, this can be your spanning tree, right? When we have spanning tree something like this, if I start my packet from source A, from A it is broadcasted to B, from B it is broadcasted to D, right? 
from D it is broadcasted to C and G from and again E from E it will be broadcasted to F. So, here we are not going to send packets repeatedly to any of these routers because there there are no loops here there are no cycles. So, clearly we are avoiding the problem that we were facing in the previous two methodologies right. So, this is how our spanning tree broadcast mechanism is helping us to encounter the problem of storming as well as sending the duplicated copy of the same packet ok. So, after understanding that this is the better approach to handle broadcasting broadcast routing the main the main thing that we need to do here is constructing the spanning tree for given graph that is the major uh, uh, thing that we need to do the constructing and managing the spanning tree becomes the crucial part here. So, in order to construct spanning tree for a given graph there are several approach used ok. We have several approaches to construct the spanning tree for given graph. We are going to discuss very few of them one or two of them one by one ok. Having understood that spanning tree broadcast mechanism is the efficient mechanism in order to perform broadcast routing among the routers which are spread across the network. We, uh, we have concluded that this is the best right. The most complex thing or the complexity that is involved under this particular methodology or mechanism is constructing and managing of spanning tree for a given graph ok. There are plenty of mechanisms or there are plenty of uh, algorithms available in order to construct the spanning tree for given graph. Now, we are going to discuss only one among them that is center based approach ok, center based approach. Under center based approach among all the routers one node or one router is considered as center here ok. For example, if consider this graph ok. Here we have all the uh, routers attached with edges in this pattern. So, anyone among them is considered as a center. Assuming that F is the first router ok which is going to join the particular spanning tree. Here we are considering E as our center ok. F first sends a tree join tree join message here we are going to make use of tree join method in center based spanning tree construction mechanism ok. Each router sends a tree join message to the center or the source which is considered as a center at the beginning. So, here to understand this concept we have considered E as our center ok. So, assuming that F first initiates or first sends a tree join message to E and establishes a connection from F to E ok. After that suppose B sends a tree join message to E. If B wants to join E we do not have any direct connection from B to E it has to pass through D. So, even D is included in the tree ok this becomes our second edge which is included in the spanning tree ok. After that our A wants to join B consider A wants to join E ok. In order to join E A can take two routes which are those routes A can go through C or it can go through B, but B is already present in the spanning tree list. Ok, router B is already present in this list. So, a tree when a tree join message is sent from A to E, it detects that B is already present there. So, this particular edge is joined. After that C might send a tree join request and it is going to be joined like this. Ok, since sorry C can directly join E, right. So, this becomes our fourth edge 
and then G, our router G wants to join router E and it sends a tree join message to the center E and when it detects that G can reach E only through D, it is joined here. So, this becomes our fifth edge. So, we have F, E, C, A, B, D, G attach something like this. So, this forms a spanning tree for a given graph. Okay? This is how center based approach is used in order to construct a spanning tree for given uh, graph. Okay? With the help of this particular graph, next the packets can be forwarded from one source to all other routers. Okay? So, if you consider this as a spanning tree, a packet from A can be forwarded to B. There is no repetition since we do not have an edge from A to C here. From B it will be sent to D. Right? From D it will be broadcasted to 3 routers. From E it will be broadcasted to F. So, there is no repetition of packets here. So, this is how broadcast routing can be performed in internet. Having understood about unicast routing and broadcast routing, now next we will move on to the next topic of discussion that is multicast where a data packet is routed from a source to subset of routers that are present in the network. Okay? Not all the routers. In case of broadcast, it is all the routers that are present in the network. In case of multicast, it is only for a subset of uh, routers. Why is it so? We might be having several applications running on the network, right? Every routers that are present in the network are not sub, uh, are not compulsorily part of that particular application. My application have several picked routers among all the routers that are present in the network. So, with specific to that particular application, I want to sp uh, send some message to all the routers that are connected to that particular application. In such scenario, we will go for multicast routing. How it can be done? We are going to discuss it. As we all know that multicast routing is nothing but forwarding a data packet from one particular source to the selected routers among the routers that are present in the network. We have two issues here. The very first issue is how to identify the receiver router means there will be plenty of routers. So, how to identify the receivers? receiver routers. This is our first issue under this and after that how to address packets here. How to address packets in this case. Okay? In case of unicast routing we have already seen a packet is associated with an IP address of the destination. Right? Each data packet that is destined to a single router. So, the IP address of that particular destination router is specified in the data packet at the source end. Right? In case of broadcast, since all the nodes in the network are the recipients, we need not specify the destination address. But here, since we are considering a small group among all the routers that are there in the network, we need to specify the address of routers to which it has to be delivered. Right? That is one issue. And how to identify those routers among all the routers that are present in the network? So, in order to perform this or in order to address these issues, we have a mechanism called address indirection. Okay, address indirection. What it does? A group of host or group of routers which belong to this particular group in which we are going to send the multicast packet are grouped together and one particular address is given to that particular group. Okay, that address is called as class D 
multicast address okay a class d multicast address is given to a group of routers okay routers which are connected to this particular address together constitutes multicast group okay it's nothing but forming a group of routers and giving a new name to that particular group okay forming the group of routers in which we are interested in and giving a new address for that that address becomes class d multicast address and that group is called as multicast group so whatever data packets whatever multicast packet that we need to transfer from a source to that particular set of routers will be forwarded to this particular address once it is delivered to this address all the routers that are connected to this particular group gets those gets the access to those uh, data packet and the hosts that are connected to that particular router will get an access to that particular data packet thereby we can deliver the data packet from source to the set of destination routers so these two issues are addressed here okay we will understand how exactly it is implemented with an example okay consider an example network here okay we have several routers here right all these are routers all these routers are connected to an address 261.17.30.197 some address which we call as class t uh, address okay through this we are forming one group multicast group here from these routers we have several hosts that are attached to these routers through some lan here through some network these routers are attached sorry these hosts are attached to these routers but it is not necessary that all these hosts are attached to this particular group among these two only this particular host is part of this multicast group similarly we might have this particular host attached okay similarly here so whenever a data packet addressed to this particular address class t address is delivered here through this immediately attached router only the hosts that are connected to this multicast group will get an access to those data packets so these pa host will receive those data packets okay this is how multicast routing is done with the help of address indirection you can have a clear look at how it exactly looks by the diagram that is displaying on the screen okay after having an understanding of this there are many questions arises now we have understood that there will be a group formed in order to form a multicast group and then uh, the data packets will be delivered to that particular group and all the hosts which are directly connected to that particular group will get uh, the data packets delivered to them but how to form this group who is go going to form this group okay once the group is formed how it can be terminated okay so there are plenty of questions who how the group address is chosen how the group is initiated and how to add a new host to the group so we have several question arise under this uh, mechanism right to answer all these things we have i g m p what do we mean by this i g m p is nothing but internet group management protocol what does this help do this will help us to establish a connection between a host to this particular group through its own messages okay igmp is going to help us to resolve the questions that we have just raised like how to how to uh, form a group how to add new host to the group how to terminate the group to all these questions igmp is going to give us an answer how it is we will see now
IGMP Internet Group Management Protocol. Okay. What it does? IGMP acts exactly between a host and its directly attached router. Okay. It acts or it plays its role between a host and its directly attached router. What it does? It makes us a way or it provides us a way or it facilitates a way through which a host can join an already existing group or a host can leave an existing leave from an existing group or to remove that group through messages. It, it has three major message membership, query message, the second one is membership report message, third one is leave group message. With the help of these three messages, IGMP helps us to manage the multicast group. Membership query message is sent by a router to uh, all the hosts that are attached to that particular multicast group. So, membership query is originated from a router and it is sent to all other hosts that are attached to that particular group through that particular router. Okay seeking or asking whether any other host in that particular group or that particular interface are part of this group. Okay? Periodically it will be sent by a router. On receiving the membership query message from a router, all other hosts which are connected to that par particular multicast group through this router's interface, they are going to respond back. Yes, we are part of this particular group. Once the response is given, that response is specified with the help of membership report message. Once the response is received, the router is going to make a list of all the hosts that are there in that particular multicast group. Okay? Periodically, membership report will be membership report message will be sent by all the hosts to the router whenever they re, uh, re, receive membership query message. Okay? The third one is leave group. This is an optional protocol. This is an optional message which most of the time we are not going to make use of it. Usually when membership repo, uh, report message is not received by any attached host for a longer duration, then the router will think that uh, there are no hosts which are connected to this particular group. So, that particular host will be removed from the group. Okay? If there is no reply from any host with the help of membership report for any membership query message, then it will think that that particular host is not there in the group. Okay? This is called as soft protocol, soft state protocol. Since why it is called as soft state protocol? Since it makes use of this mechanism. Instead of terminating it, it just waits for some time. If there is no reply or response from that, from the routers or the host that are at, at the other end, then that will be disconnected or that will be removed from the groups. That is why it is called as soft state protocol. So, this is about our IGMP. Moving on to the next topic. The next topic of discussion is multicast routing algorithm. Similar to our broadcast routing algorithm, we also have multicast routing algorithm. Here, if you consider this example, we have a graph here where all these are routers. Each router will have several hosts connect to these routers, right? These are all hosts that are connected to 
these rotors. Considering that our hosts that are connected to A and B and E and F, okay, hosts which are connected to A and B and E and F are part of multi, uh, this multicast group. So, the routers A, B, E, F belong to a multicast group. Okay. So, any data packet which originate from A should be delivered to the hosts that are connected to the multicast group through B, E, F. If you look at this example, it is not possible for us to deliver the data packet that is originated from A or B to E and F because without C and D which are not part of this particular multicast group uh, without the help of these routers it is not possible for us to deliver the packets from this end to this end. So, in order to do that similar to our broadcast routing here also we need to construct a tree. Okay, we need to construct a tree through which we can route the data packets that originated from one router to another router in this multicast group. Even though C and D do not belong to the multicast group, we need to include them by constructing a tree. In order to construct a tree, we have three approach here. One is two approach, one is single shared tree and another one is source specific tree building approach. Okay. In order to build tree, we make use of previously existing methodologies uh, which were used in broadcast algorithms. Okay. But here we need, we will follow two mechanisms. Either we are going to have a single tree uh, made out of this particular graph and the same tree is shared among all the nodes in order to perform multicast routing. Otherwise, source for each source a separate tree is going to be constructed. So, how this single shared tree is going to be constructed? In case of single shared tree mechanism, it makes use of center based approach which we have already studied. Okay? Our single shared tree mechanism uses center based approach to construct the spanning tree for given graph. Okay? Once the tree is constructed, uh, data packet is forwarded from source to all other uh, nodes that are there in that particular multicast group. In case of source specific tree, it makes use of reverse path forwarding which we have already studied. Okay? Reverse path forwarding along with a mechanism called pruning. Okay. So, this is how multicast routing algorithm can be done with the help of constructing a tree. It is, it falls under two methodology again, either having constructing a single shared tree for the entire multicast, uh, multicast uh, routing or by creating a specific uh, tree for each of the uh, routers that are present in that particular network. Okay. This is about multicast routing algorithm. Among all the multicast routing algorithms present, there are plenty of routing algorithms present in the internet. The very first protocol that is used is distance vector multicast routing. Okay? We have seen how distance vector routing algorithm works. So, with respect to multicast uh, routing, it acts that is the very first primitive protocol which was in use and then the most widely used one is PIM that is most widely used protocol nowadays is PIM which is protocol independent uh, protocol independent multicast routing protocol. Okay? So, that again falls under two category one is dense mode and another is sparse mode. In case of dense mode all the routers are located very densely they are connected through a dense network. In case of sparse mode it is the, uh, the routers in the network are widely spread across the network very sparse connection between them is present there. 
so again they make make use of the same methodologies which we have already discussed okay this makes use of uh, reverse path forwarding along with pruning and dense mode makes use of center base approach so that is how routing will take place in multicast okay so this is all about the network layer this finishes our third module okay in the next class we are going to study about the next module